welcome to my annual how to grow long hair fast video. So why do I make a video about the same topic every single year? Well, because I learn new things and I create new experiences that I need to share with you guys. That way you guys have the best possible tips on how to grow your hair as fast as possible. So my main overall tip on how to grow long hair fast is to keep your hair as healthy as can be. Now I've personally never taken supplemental vitamins or prenatal vitamins that are meant to help your skin, hair, and nails. But if you're looking to try every single possible avenue on how to achieve long healthy hair, then I'll suggest that you take a look at those kinds of vitamins. However, I personally simply eat well and drink plenty of water. Water is very good for your body, again your skin, hair, and nails, and your overall health. So instead of drinking a lot of soda, just swap out the soda for water or even the juice for water and you will start uh, seeing results in the way that your body functions and probably also uh, in your hair. Another thing that I do to make sure that my hair is nice and healthy is avoid heat styling it often. I don't get done up every day. Typically I just put my hair either in a ponytail or in a bun, in a braid. If I'm just lounging around the house or just running some quick errands, going to the gym, going to work school, what have you. I don't need to heat style my hair all the time. I only do so on special occasions when I know I'm gonna be taking some pictures or if I'm filming a video. So typically I only heat style my hair about once a week and when I do heat style my hair, I make sure to protect my hair not only with heat protecting spray, this is the brand that I use. I believe it is brand Silk Elements and it smells really nice and I've been using this for years. So I spray this before I heat style my hair and then on top of that, I also make sure to use only ceramic plated or maybe fully ceramic products because they are way less damaging than metal um, heat styling products. Although the metal ones are more effective and I believe they're stronger, they probably hold a better curl or allow you to straighten your hair faster. They are way more damaging than the ceramic ones so if you're interested in preserving the health of your hair definitely go for ceramic heat styling tools as opposed to any other metal tools so currently for heat styling i am using the the lange 25 millimeter wand that i just showed you as well as the lange hair sleek straightener also ceramic plated and again i use this for when i straighten my hair so you see the plates are ceramic as opposed to titanium. They do sell titanium hair straighteners and they suggest that you get that if you have very thick hair or very stubborn hair because again the metal is stronger but it is way more damaging so um, I would always suggest to just go for ceramic plated heat styling products that way uh, we won't damage your hair as much but overall if you could just avoid heat styling your hair often in general then that would be ideal reducing the amount of heat styling that you do to your hair also reduces the number of split ends that you have on your hair and helps you keep your hair when you go for the haircut instead of having like five inches of split ends that you need to cut off. If you treat your hair right, then you may only need to cut off an inch at a time every time you go for a haircut. Now I'm not saying to avoid haircuts because actually haircuts are very, very important to growing out your hair. And it may sound counterintuitive because you want to grow out your hair, so why are you going to cut it? Well, it's because you need to remove the dead, damaged parts of your hair, otherwise it's going to spread higher and higher, and ultimately you're going to have to cut off more than you would have if you had just maintained it. So I would suggest to go for a trim every couple months and depending on how healthy your hair is or how damaged your hair is will determine how often you need to go. When I had very, very damaged hair, I would straighten my hair every single day with titanium plated straightening iron and without um, heat protecting spray. And uh, I had very very bad split ends and very crunchy hair and I need to go to the salon frequently because my hair was just getting really really bad uh, in the end I had uh, shoulder length hair that was layered so layers are awful by the way <laughs> and once I got to that point I decided to absolutely stop heat styling my hair for a year and I was able to grow it from this length with layers to about right here and also grew out my layers as well. 
in just a year. So that's like, I don't even know how many inches, but you know, that's, that's a pretty long way. Just taking care of your hair, avoiding heat styling it, and then also going for trims. At my worst point of my hair health, I had to go for a trim every three months because split ends would just appear even though I wasn't heat styling it, just because it was just so damaged already. And uh, after probably a year's worth of just like trimming off an inch to half an inch, I know it doesn't seem like a lot and like why do you even go to the hair salon to get half an inch trimmed off, but it did go a long way and it kept my hair healthy and my hair grew tremendously within that year. So another tip that I would really recommend is to avoid dyeing and definitely bleaching your hair. Last year I had the brilliant idea to go ombre and since I have naturally dark hair, it required me to bleach my hair. It took me nine hours in one sitting to get my hair to this like nasty, orangey, blonde kind of color, which was just awful. And then two more four to five hour sessions of, um, what's that word? Toning my hair to try to get it to a more ash blonde kind of look. But it ended up just being like an okay blonde in the end. But I mean, really, after all that, boy, did it leave some damage on my hair. After all that, I needed to cut off five inches of my hair. Luckily, last year, my hair was the longest I had ever let it grow. It was super duper long. So even though I cut off five, five inches, it was just like barely above my waist. And after all that, I'm actually still dealing with the aftermath of that brilliant decision to bleach my hair. I mean, luckily I was able to save the health of my hair because circumstances arose and I actually needed to go back to my natural hair color and um, luckily I didn't have to go keep going back for treatments, which uh, would have been really bad, just made it worse and worse. But even though it didn't take me very long to go back to Burnett, I still have to dye my hair every so often because after a couple of washes, you're able to see the uh, dyed hair become lighter than my natural hair. And you would think, oh, well, then you achieved your ombre, but it just looks weird, so I have to dye my hair. But I try to wait as long as possible between me dyeing my hair because, uh, again, one of my tips is to not dye your hair. And if you need to dye your hair, then just don't do it as often or get product that doesn't have like super harsh chemicals in it. But you know, just do some research and figure out which ones are the least damaging and please. For goodness gracious, do not bleach your hair and if you really want a change but you're maybe not sure if you really want to commit to it, just get a wig. If I had worn an ombre wig before I decided to go ombre, I probably would have worn that wig for like a week and be like, yeah, you know what, it's not really me, but you know, it's good I have this wig here and my super healthy uh, dark hair, but no, I just went ahead and dyed it. And now a year later, or almost a year later, I'm still dealing with the aftermath. And if you want to see my journey of me going ombre and all the stuff I had to deal with, I will leave the video in the description box below. So, I mean, ultimately I did kind of like it in the end, but some circumstances arose, I needed to go back to Burnett right away, and boy was I actually really glad that I did. So yeah, solid tip, do not bleach your hair, and avoid dyeing your hair as much as possible. So it's always damaging, and it's always a bad idea if you are looking to keep your hair long and healthy. But I mean, if you want short colored hair, then you know, go ahead. Okay, so finally, let's move on to hair treatments. Now, the only time I ever got a salon quality deep conditioning treatment was when I was bleaching my hair because the uh, stylist felt bad that I was sitting in a chair for nine hours and then had to go back again to do the retoning and all that. She gave me a free um, deep conditioning treatment. And my hair felt amazing for like two weeks. And then after that, I was able to really see the damage that had been done for bleaching my hair. My hair was frizzy and coarse and crunchy and it tangled really easily, which it had never done before. Plus, on top of all of that, a lot of it was actually falling out. And you know what? I actually need to make an updated version of that video I was talking to you about earlier about my journey and going ombre. Because when I made that video, I still had the deep conditioning treatment working, so I thought, hey, you know, it wasn't that bad. Um, but then afterwards, I was pretty angry with uh, the result, and then I still have to deal with toning and all that. Well, that's more like uh, another video that I need to make. And when I do make it, I'll probably link it in the description box below. But yes, avoid bleaching your hair as much as possible. 
So back to treatments. That salon quality deep conditioning treatment was I believe $60. Obviously I didn't pay for it because it was complimentary because she felt bad for me. But again, it only lasted two weeks. So I would suggest instead of paying $60 for a treatment that's only going to last you two weeks and also going to cost you $60, just get some inexpensive store-bought deep conditioning treatments from your local Target, Walmart, or you know, Sally's Beauty or whatever and save not only a ton of money but also probably get better results because this little packet is like five dollars, even less than five dollars, I think it was like three something and I use this one all the time I got this one for Christmas and have not used it yet but it's the exact same thing but you can also get one in this style like a tube, it's just a deep conditioning Argan oil. So this is the one I've been using uh, ever since I went back to Burnett to treat the frizz and the tangles and the crunchiness and um, I started off using them and then I couldn't find them. I think they were out of stock for a little bit so I tried using other ones and they didn't do anything. This is the only one that works for me and again it's from the brand Hask Hair and it's the Argan Oil, Argan oil from Morocco. Yellow packet. They do have different ones like keratin and coconut but this is the one that's my favorite I mean to be honest this is the only one I tried but you know it's my favorite and it works so I'm going to stick with this one so again has care uh, deep conditioning treatment I use it um, now I use it once a month but before I would use it two to three times a month and then once my hair started getting really healthy again then now I just again use it just once a month just to keep my hair nice healthy not as frizzy. I mean, I naturally have frizzy hair, but not like it was after I dyed my hair. That was like, that was bad. Oh, and then on top of being awesome deep conditioning and smelling great and all, they are cruelty free. So definitely go for Hask Hair if you are not sure what deep conditioning you want to get. Inexpensive, cruelty free, smells amazing, and works well. And then on top of um, monthly deep conditioning treatments, I also put argan oil on my hair after I take a shower. So speaking of oil, another tip would be to avoid washing your hair every single day because you may be actually drying out your hair. So I would suggest to wash your hair every other day that way your natural oils that come from your scalp can nourish your hair. But if you just can't do that, say you work out all the time and you need to wash your hair or you just have naturally oily hair, then I guess you don't really have to worry about this. But if you just can't wash your hair every other day, then at least switch out your shampoo for something that's not as drying because believe it or not, most shampoos out there actually have drying ingredients that will not necessarily damage your hair, but again, they're drying your hair out, which is not uh, optimal for your hair health. But they add those in there because it helps, you know, clean out your hair, but at the same time, it also dries it. So you just need to look up the shampoos that are free of those kind of chemicals or ingredients and uh, just get all nourishing shampoos and conditioners. Uh, so those are all my tips on how to grow long hair fast. Um, again, there is no magic product that works for everyone. And also genetics play a big role on um, how fast you grow your hair, how thick it is, uh, how it responds to certain treatments and products. But as long as you keep yourself healthy, your body and your mind, and you follow these tips on how to keep your hair healthy, then you'll see results within months. And yes, this is a very long process, but if you truly want it, you will make it happen. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And also, um, actually check out the videos in the description box below for more info or more videos. And... Don't forget to click that red subscribe button if you have not already so I can see you next time. Bye!